There are several different categories of special right triangles. I don't know if you noticed, but on that worksheet, several of those triangles, if you paid attention, had legs of three and four and a hypotenuse of five. Okay? That's one type of special right triangle, a three, four, five triangle where your legs are three and four and your hypotenuse is five. Um, there's also another one like that, a 5, 12, 13, where the legs are 5 and 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. You can also do multiples of those numbers. So with your 3, 4, 5, you can have a 6, 8, 10. You can have a 9, 12, 15. Okay, you can multiply all the numbers by a particular number. So with 5, 12, 13, you can have 10, 24, 26. Okay. Just as a side note, what we're going to focus on are we're going to focus on two types of special right triangles. First of all, we're going to look at what we call 45 45 90 triangle, okay, where it's a right triangle and the two base angles are 45 degrees. Okay, this is an isosceles triangle. So, what do we know about isosceles triangles? Two of their legs are the same. So, you will see in this diagram, here's the relationship that always exists with 45-45-90 uh, The legs, you consider their lengths to be x, they have the same length, and the hypotenuse is always going to be that length times the square root of 2. So if we know one of the legs of a 45-45-90 triangle, we can find the other two using this relationship. So let's look at example 1 there on the paper. Um, it's a 45-45-90 triangle. We are told that one of the legs is 5 square roots of 2. Well, that means that we know that the other leg, B, is also 5 square roots of 2. It has the same length because 45-45-90, it's an isosceles triangle. These two legs have the same length. So they are both 5 square roots of 2. The hypotenuse, we are going to multiply the leg length by the square root of 2. Okay, we're going to multiply the leg length by the square root of 2. So when we multiply the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, the result is 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. That means A, or the hypotenuse of this triangle, is 10. No. Because that is always the relationship that exists in a 45-45-90 triangle. The hypotenuse is the leg length times the square root of 2. You're very well. Alright, so number 2, this time we're told the hypotenuse. This hypotenuse is 12 square root of 2. So the legs, we just drop that square root of 2. And so M and N are both 12. Okay, M and N are both 12. Now, I didn't mention this, but on example number one, if you could identify the two legs, both as five square roots of two, because it's an isosceles triangle, you can still use the Pythagorean theorem, okay, to find that hypotenuse. If you forgot what the relationship was, or you weren't quite certain that you multiplied by the right thing, you could use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, but the only thing with that is you're squaring the expression that has the square roots, so you've got to put those extra parentheses in there to make sure you get the right thing. Um, but this confirms that that not hypotenuse is 10. That's just going back to number 1. Now number 2, you're kind of stuck. You can't really, you got to know what the relationship is to, to find those, those legs. Okay, let's look at number 3. Number three, we are told that the hypotenuse is five square roots of ten. Well, that's not quite as straightforward as the one we just did. Okay, so the legs are x, the hypotenuse is x times the square root of two. So if we have the hypotenuse, couldn't we just divide it by the square root of two to find out what the legs are? Now, we didn't really talk about this that in depth, but when you divide square roots, you can divide what's under the square root. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. That is equivalent to 5 square roots of 5. So that is the length of our legs. A and B for this triangle are 5 square roots of 5. 
because it wasn't under square root. You can't mix square roots and dot square roots. Okay, so if you have two square roots, divide by square You can simplify that, yes. Okay. All right, and then let's look at number four. We're given a leg, so that means we automatically know the other leg. That other leg is the exact same thing, 11 square roots of 2 over 2. To find the hypotenuse, we need to multiply that expression by the square root of 2, okay? And um, as I was just, Mallory and I were discussing, you can only combine square roots, okay? You can only divide square roots. You can only multiply things that are under the square roots. So um, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, okay, at this point you should know when you multiply square root by itself, it's just whatever's under the square root. So that's 11 times 2 on the top. It's still divided by 2, but we can cancel out those 2s, so the hypotenuse x here is 11. Okay? So, not terribly difficult. You just got to remember the relationships between the, the legs and the hypotenuse. Now, we also have what we call 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay? 30, 60, 90. Similar concepts, but it's a little bit, you've got an extra detail to remember because it's not an isosceles triangle anymore. It's not so easy that the two legs have the same length. These two legs do not have the same length. So notice, the leg opposite 30 degrees is what we consider x. The hypotenuse is just 2 times that value. The leg opposite of 60 degrees is x times the square root of so let's just jump into an example here um, to, to see how all this works out. Now, uh, pretty much on these triangles, they just label the 30, or excuse me, the 60 degree angle. So you know if it's a if it's a right triangle, then the other angle is 30 degrees. So I would go ahead and label that on, on the triangle. Okay, go ahead and label that other angle as 30. So they give us the side opposite 30. That's good, because that's x. That means this one's going to be easier to figure out. Because if we know x, all we have to do is multiply by 2 for the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is 16. And for the leg across from 60, we just got to stick a square root of 3 on the end. So a 16, b is 8 square roots of 3. That one, pretty simple. Okay, let's look at number 6. They give us the hypotenuse. Well, that makes life fairly simple as well. They give us the hypotenuse. Then um, half of that length is the leg across from the 30. So V, I know, is 11. And then once I know that, I just got to stick a square root of 3 on the end of it. And that gives me U, the side across from the 60. Okay, let's look at a little bit more complicated of an example. They give us the hypotenuse, but it already has a square root of 3 on it. Yeah, not terrible, okay? Not a terrible situation. Let's start with the 30 degrees. That's typically where I go first, okay? Regardless of which leg I'm given, I try to go to the 30 degrees first because it, it's usually a pretty straightforward relationship, okay? So the Side across from 30 degrees is half the hypotenuse. So I need to divide 4 square root of 3 by 2. Okay, So I only divide the coefficients. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that means v is equal to 2 square roots of 3. We do not change the 3 because it's under a square root. Okay, And then to find the side across from 60, I take the side across from 30 and I multiply it by the square root of 3. So when I multiply by the square root of 3, I get the square root of 3 times 3, the square root of 3, which is 3. And so 2 times 3 is 6. So A is 6. Okay, number 8. We're given the hypotenuse again. It's equal to 3, so I know that the side across from 30 is half that. Well, unfortunately, 3 is not evenly divisible by 2, but that's okay. We'll just write it as 3 over 2, so n is equal to 3 over 2. 
And for the side across from 60, we just need to stick the square root of 3 on that. So the side across from 60 is equal to 3 square roots of 3 over 2.